Hi, I'm Peter Michael. I'm Managing Director of Michael's Camera, Video and Digital. It's great, my great pleasure today to introduce Joyce Evans, who's been a long-time friend of ours, mine and ours, uh, and is a practicing photographer uh, to talk to us today. Uh, Joyce told me just a little bit before we started that she basically got the photographic urge at about age 19 with the uh, gift of a Leica camera. Later in life, Joyce started a gallery that was also a bookstore. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that was on Chapel Street. Or sorry, no, Church Street in Richmond. Yep, Church Street, Richmond. Corner of Church and Gibbs Street in okay. Richmond. And that was in about the mid-1970s, I understand? Yep. Is photography art? What's your opinion on it? Obviously, you're a photographer and you were in that space, but how do we still you know, deal with this overriding question of is photography art? What's what is art? Nobody knows what art is. I mean, Duchamp says, if you put a toilet in a gallery and you call it art, it's art. I have created this. I'm putting it in an art gallery. Uh, I say it is art. I live as work as an artist. Um, and therefore, it is art. We then join the actual creation and the artist to the market. And that was the function that I tried to fulfill. In other words, to create an environment in Melbourne where the best photography in the world could be seen, both in original form and also in books. Postcards, posters, um, films. But the, the key thing is that this question of what is art really has been blown open. It's not anymore the relevant point. What the point is, is is it a good? And on the basis of that, is this acceptable? For me, I wanted to show the best photography that I could find of people live, dead, young, old, established, non-established. And what we did in those days is we actually framed all of our photographers' work. No charge. No wonder we went broke. Um, and we, we charged a huge 40% to the uh, photographer. We there's, there's Uluru here, right? Um, that's my, one of my keynote images. I always just call it Uluru and the date. I don't think it needs more than that, but not to say what it is, I find is a lack of respect. The photograph has to have a story that can be told many times and not always the same way. And something like this particular photograph um, has taught me a lot about what photography is about. There are things here that have taught me about the rock itself. You know, there's this sweep here. This, it's a sort of a type of poetry. The sky, it's totally or almost totally negative as compared to the rock. Um, this here, where we are looking there and there at what look like the scars, the scarification that goes onto an Aboriginal person when you go through law. And that's how the body is scarred. And so line here, see that line there? And then this intersecting here, there's, there's, there's energy points. This one here, I've been really, really sparse with. It's two different visits to the rock. And this is me, where I've sort of done a lot of work on this particular image and sort of brought up stories and, and, and elements. But here, can you see these? Yeah, they're coming in on the feed. Right, okay. On the left-hand side image, 
what I was searching for was uh, a landscape with no, no footprints, and then I put my own foot in it, which was very naughty. And what I wanted to talk about is how, in terms of the land itself, the rock was very tiny. It's, you know, it's eventually going to sort of go into the land itself and become part of the soil. And where is its importance? Its importance is in its nowness. This very, very gentle, I, I love the Baroque. So there's this very, very gentle movement and the trees on the horizon, which if you drive in the country or walk in the country, that horizon is constantly there. This, this horizon is, is so incredibly beautiful. Anyway, so I went back and shot this. I was thinking four years later, isn't it? I went back and decided to play. And that's the beauty of photography. It enables you to play um, many, many things. But this is going to a, a place called the Rain Dreaming, which is just out of Yuendamu. And I went with a member of Melbourne University staff who was doing the contacts. And um, I, <laughs> uh, I said, have we permission to go and take photos? And she said, yes, I've got permission. And I said, for me to do it? He says, she said, yes. So the next day I went to the traditional owner and I had it all as digital files in the com uh, computer. And, and I said, I took these photographs and I want to make sure that none of them are that, that all of them are able to be uh, used and sold to the National Library, who is my major client, or to other people. And he said, I didn't give you permission. And we had what looked like a standoff. He was going to say, no, you can't use them. And then I thought about something that uh, kind of works sometimes. And I looked at him and I said, um, well, my name is such and such, and I'm older than you, and you must show me respect. <laughs> and he said, no, I'm not, you're not, I am. I said, how old are you? And I was two years older than him. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so we all burst out, because they have marvelous sense of humor. And uh, we all burst out laughing. And, um, it all worked out fine. These rocks here have this amazing feeling of having been painted. You know, they don't... Look at that. It looks like an amazing painting, doesn't it? Yes. Look at, look at the, the, the lines that are here. And they're like Aboriginal art. And so you can say to yourself, wait a second, with, with this sort of landscape, how could you not be influenced and become a painter? Mm -hmm. And then you've got these shapes and forms. And they, look at these marvellous lines that are there. And here again, the same sort of strong design features that nature has done. Um, it's, it's a, a strong one too. Okay, now this is, this is a really funny story. Um, I found an album that I'd put together and um, in the old days getting prints made was expensive so you had your contacts. So these are, these are all from contacts, you know, 35 millimeter contact prints. And um, it goes to show the, what you can actually do if somebody knows what they're doing when they're scanning. So um, these are photographs that I took um, when I was an activist. And um, it, this is sort of student marching. Um, and uh, Melbourne Uni, I was a member there. This is one of the trade unions, and, and look, look at them. I mean, I, I just love what these sort of things tell you. I mean, 
uh, the hat, the coat, you know, the suit. Now these are all workers' unions. They're not, um, they're blue collar workers and they're all sort of dressed up to go to church. Well, and of course they have a much different meaning today than they did at the time when you took them. Because, you know, are they, they're, how many other people were out there documenting this at the time? I mean, photography was expensive. And just as you said, you know, you weren't able to do large prints at the time. You had your contact sheets. Yeah. So these might be the only record that, 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 that exists of that event. Yep. Mm -hmm. Probably here. I don't think anyone else was taking this. Basically, my interest in documenting goes way, way back. I just felt the need to tell the story. Uh, this is a bunch of women. We were all living in these tents. Um, there's me in the shorts. And there's uh, Edward. Uh, oh, that's badly done. I have to redo that. Um, his name's not done right. Um, he was my boyfriend at the time. He's very cute. He's dead now, which is a nuisance. Not only were we smoking, not only were we wearing shorts and nothing on the top, but we were drinking and drinking not in the ladies' bar. And see the bloke in the back? This is what I love about documentary photography. <laughs> that, that came out of the, the newspaper. Yeah. It was head, front page. Terrible behaviour. <laughs> now we're going to Cotswold Farm. And this is very important for me because it's this first photograph here which um, I made in 82 after I'd started taking my classes. It was great. You know, here was I running prestigious gallery handling all sorts of photographers, talking to people like Cortez and so on and so forth. And I think I had a stick somewhere where it shouldn't have been. <laughs> and um, within a day or two, because we used to just show what we'd shot, and then we'd discuss it and see where we could improve and what we should have done and so on. There was a lot of group work, which I thought was excellent. And I realised that I had nothing on anyone else. <laughs> You know, we're all equal. This photo here was the first photo I took, which I recognised as being the sort of photograph that a photographer should take. That it wasn't just an accident. It was a d using my n understanding of design and my understanding of the camera and so on and so forth. Um, and being conscious of what I was making. So then I went back and I did a whole stack of plays. I went here about three years. This exhibition was uh, 1986, mm -hmm. so, so this is 82. So I bought a Hasselblad in the meantime, and so using that made a lot of difference. And this again is later again, but it's still the same sort of thing. It's, it's looking at the way in which this particular set of fields creates form and how the camera sort of, it, it's, it's like Marilyn Monroe. This for me is my Marilyn Monroe. You can't take a bad photo of it. <laughs> this is where I'm starting, I started to play with things. I went to New Guinea to Amalgam, which is a festival in New Ireland. Um, and I, did these large photographs of the, this is the Mulligan itself, this uh, structure. And it's just uh, put up there with posts at the back to hold it. There's no back to it. And this is all covered in um, reeds which have been woven. And then these are different mats that have been produced. And what I was looking at was the, the concept of the fact that um, this is a festival that goes way back, at least 500, maybe a thousand years. And this is the way in which they celebrate their time and they 
mourn their father who died and they respect the traditions that exist there. And then I thought, but in the meantime, they've all become Christianized. So I got hold of a Christ and I put it on the, um, the, the uh, Maligan and was integrating those two religions. And I think that with nearly all of us, I mean, if you look at a, um, uh, an Irish Catholic in Australia and look at an Irish Catholic in Ireland, they'd be very different. You know, um, the same would be for uh, an, an Australian Jew as compared to an Israeli Jew. Um, whatever religion it is, we all change when we come to a new country. Well, this New Ireland, as, as was New Guinea, was Christianized. And so the figure of Christ becomes sort of um, a symbol of that Christianization. I've, I've projected the Christ figure. The pr I, no, I had the Christ figure on a black velvet background mm -hmm. and then projected these images onto it. Mm -hmm. And so we had the two amalgamated. Now, the, with Photoshop, these days you can do it so easily. Mm -hmm. So this is very crude compared to what you can do with Photoshop. So there's um, the uh, um, the blood of the pig all over Christ. I th think I did this before um, we had the you know the guy who did the. Uh, Piss Christ. Oh, okay. He became quite famous because he um, he pissed all over a, a, a Christ figure, and um, he well, called it Piss Christ. There's there's another one. That's the, the Warrior Christ. You know? So they're just ideas that we have. This is a case of working for beauty. I took these photographs and I decided that I needed to make them very beautiful. I, when I took them, I was aware of their japanese feel. Mm. And what I needed to get was the sand articulated and this lovely sense of line. And um, I went to this printer and said, I would like that done. And we worked on it and um, after a while we got it and what we did is we found this awagami paper which is absolutely amazing it's made from mulberries mm -hmm. mulberry tree and um, it has so much tactile you can put one finger here you know and you can just um, hold it and it's almost flat it's so strong it's so so beautiful it, me talking about the road um, this one here strangely enough i was with some aboriginal people at the time and see this little hole there oh yes i didn't see that and one of the one of the guys pointed it out to me and said there's a spider's hole and uh so I took the photo of it and uh, there are some very interesting dynamics here, particularly my shoe, which of course is bad news, shouldn't <laughs> have done that. But yeah, we didn't talk about that yet, that's right. Okay, so this is roadkill. I, I, what I, the, the thing about any, any body of work, whether it's a portrait, whether it's um, roadkills or whatever it is, when I first started, I was photographing you know, the, 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 the animal going back into the, into the earth, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, with that whole philosophy. And you have to, I believe, um, the way I work and the way I think, is that you, you've got to have the story, but the story has to be something that holds. Now, with the roadkill, 
eventually what I decided to do was to always look for the entire animal, to show that this was a beautiful creature that was dead. And in many cases like this dog, the legs are too stiff and so on and so forth. But when you first see it, it almost looks as though it's sleeping. But these ones here, for instance, are the kangaroo. And, but you can see how there's that sense of them being entire. You know, they're not, okay, some, see that one, you, you, you could scarcely know it was dead. Well, that's a, an amazing body of work, very, vi you know, you've covered on so many different areas and lots of different pieces of the technology. You've embraced digital and you, uh, you, you've got a very keen understanding of, uh, of what makes an image. And uh, I love it. I love the way you analyze them. And uh, I love the, the enjoyment that you get out of them because, of course, that's, that's what it's all about.